Morning, everyone. Morning. Well, I know that the life isn't expressing through each and every one of you in its fullness. And those that don't understand, don't continue to block it off <laughs> with concepts and ideas and images. Mm. Leave it there in its fullness, relax into it. And that I can say, Scripture will say, it'll come true. Acknowledge Him in all thy ways and He will direct thy path. The Him you acknowledge is not Big Daddy. <laughs> it is that awareness, that non-conceptual, mm. ever-fresh presence awareness. That is the life and the functioning of this manifestation, the total functioning. And the functioning is only apparent, mm. it's only seemingly so. Mm. And that's why they call it a phenomenal manifestation. The definition of phenomena that which appears to be. So look at the wondrous and amazing ways that it does pattern, shape and form and appear. The trees, the flowers, the earth, the mountains, the lakes, the humans and all the other animals, birds and insects that are expressions of that non-conceptual, ever-fresh presence awareness. And the awareness has never been corrupted or contaminated by any of its expressions. Mm. Knowing and recognising, recognising that, that that is the true nature. Now that entity, that body mind person, we've taken it to believe out that we that is what we are ourselves. Ourselves. How many selves are there? Mm. When they tell you it's the one self that's patterning, shaping, forming and experiencing and expressing as everything. The absolute. Yeah. And you can't be anything other than that. And see how we've localised ourselves into the pattern, shape and form of a body and a mind. Mm. And separa seemingly separated ourselves, these personal selves, from the totality. When it's still only the one. And we're doing that because, as they tell us in the scriptures, it's ignorance. We're ignoring our true nature and focusing into all the conceptual shapes, patterns and forms and thoughts and feelings and emotions that we've taken ourselves to be. All seeming separate patterns, shapes and forms. But every pattern, shape and form is a vibrating pattern in that one essence which they call the cognizing emptiness. The emptiness that has the cognizing or the knowing capacity suffusing it. Pure intelligence is another cognizing. Now it's intelligence energy, as I put it. The activity of knowing. And either these ones we call ourself are knowing right now. But is that knowing itself, or the, 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 the belief that I am knowing, is that doing in it, any of it? Or is it the very life itself that is the knowing that we've taken on the belief that the person is knowing, the individual, the separate entity? I know, I see, I hear, <coughs> I taste, I touch, I smell. I know all about the smelling part. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> but it's all the, when we break it up into concepts and relating it to the I or me, <coughs> we've separated ourselves from the totality, which is made up of things. Things appear to be so, phenomenal manifestation, appearances, 
はい<笑> as everything breaks up into seeming separate entities but they're like waves appear on the ocean mm. but they are never anything other than order yes. like a fire can have seeming flames in different parts uh, where it's going on but it's still the one fire as patterns and expresses and look at how the flames leap and play around and the different shapes and forms they appear mm -hmm. so that what needs to be recognized that all these things are appearing in this space like still silent screen they haven't contaminated or corrupted the screen and you take the life essence out of that pattern you call you how long does it last then it soon starts to rot and break down as nature continues to express through it the life and the same life and using different expressions now as the bacteria and the germs and things that break it down. But it's still the same life. Mm. And realising that or recognising that, what must you be? Yeah. Are you the body? Are you the mind? Are you the pattern, shape and form or the thing mm. that it's expressing through? Well, are you the life itself? As I say, when the life or life intelligence energy is taken out of it, it's a corpse that breaks down back into its natural essence again, which is a space like cottonizing emptiness. But it's no longer in the shape and form of a body or a mind or a person. But where does that life begin? What shape has it got? What form has it got? What shape has space got? What form has it got? What centre has it got? What circumference or boundaries does it have? A bird takes off and tries to fly to the end of space. Think it'll ever get there? No. <laughs> so but that energy that it vibrates at, that movement, does the silence have any pattern, any shape, any form? When it's struck as a musical note, it might seem to have a vibration that vibrates but that's all it all is but it's suffused with an innate intelligence in the very way it's patterning shape and forming the wondrous ways the myriads of different ways implies it's not a thing that comes about haphazardly this body for instance look at the way it's formed with all the nerves, enzymes, heart, lungs, organs, and everything else, hair, fingernails, the voice box, the voice, the brain. And you can apply that to all the pattern shapes and forms, the, the sentient, the ones that have that life function for them, and what, what appears to be insentient, but are still that same life essence. You know, the, the mountain, where did that form from? It formed from the, probably a volcano, a molten, or a molten metals or whatever is in it, you know, it formed from the molten rocks. In it. What happens when it solidifies? In the concept of time, it seems to be take years, and you say, oh, it's no life in it. Mm. But watch what's going on in it. Yeah. The sun shines on it. 
and it expands a little bit. Then the night, the freezing will come in the night, what will it do? It will crack that little bit off it. Mm -hmm. Or something, the water will run over it and it will erode it. It breaks it down till it goes back into its basic essence again, energy, over a, concept, over a period of time. But we've taken on this concept there is such a thing as time. But it's always this eternal moment. And you, as the life, are eternal. So you don't want to be fearful of death. The pattern will break down, the shape and form, but it's changing right now. You haven't had the same body had it two weeks ago. Are you mourning that? Oh, that good part of me is gone. You know, take your leg off or your hip out, they might say, it's gone. I've had a hip type removal and I don't even notice it now. <laughs> I don't mourn it. Though, if I like to think about it, I'd be much better with what was in. And it would be much better if the knees weren't breaking down and wearing out. <laughs> but still, that's how it goes. It's constantly transient. Everything is changing. Yeah. Recognise and know that they're changing and be with the change. Leakin you don't have to dissect every moment it's changing, but, but see how it appears and expresses through the very eyes that are in that body, enabling to see the change that comes about in the lower thing. That's one, another wondrous part of it. We have eyes to see with, have ears to hear with, a voice to speak with, a nose and a mouth to breathe through, and eat through the mouth, and a digestive system all for that life to express through. And life continually lives on life. Yeah. And out of life, more life comes. It's got no time or space for death because it only lasts a moment. It's got no duration to it whatsoever. And in that momentary thing, you can't say it's beginning because as you're saying it, it's changed, it, it's already changed and it's ending. But you can't say it's ending because it's changing and already beginning. And you can't say it's changing because it's already ending. <laughs> so it's spontaneous. It's got no duration to it, no boundaries to it. And what's left to do? Nothing but enjoy the change. Realise that the essence that you are, though it seems to be painful and suffering, the essence that you are has never changed. And what happens then when you're not fixating on the way the pattern's functioning so much, you're being with the what isness of it all, being with what that pure intelligence functioning through the body and the brain and the mind, so called mind, enables you to enables it to be recognised and seen or heard or felt or tasted. And it couldn't be without these men. And it's there for the display and enjoyment. Mm. Not to suffer, not to put it on the label, on the knee, or oh, I'm no good, or I'm unhappy, yeah. and I'm fearful, and I'm anxious. It's bad enough without putting the labels on it. <laughs> and those sensations come up, <laughs> feelings and sensations. Mm. But we label them, take them on board, keep them in the pattern, instead of let, letting them go, letting them free themselves and release themselves as they came in with their inspired, with the inspiration, the coming and the breath coming in, and they fi seemingly fixate there, if we fixate on them with the thoughts, with a thing called mind, but there's no such thing as mind when you look at it. It's only a conceptual ising going on forming mental concepts or images and taking those images to be real and when we think they're real, we think they're solid and substantial. But where are yesterday's thoughts gone? Are they still there? Only if you recall them or if they've been fixated on and haven't been let go from the previous day. But you realise if you're not recalling a thought, what you thought of a minute ago, if it's not being recalled, it's gone forever. 
you may have dreamed last night. And then that dream, you, all sorts of things are going on. When you wake up, where has it gone? It's disappeared. <coughs> now you're going to say that dream, I'll remember that dream. Well, you might remember parts of it. You might recall parts of it. But when are you recalling them? You're recalling what now right in this immediacy. And the mountains and the hills and the sky and the space and the traffic and everything else that would appeared in that dream. And the, you realise your body had never moved off the bed and be no words come out of your mouth. <laughs> but... So you don't realise that we wake up to this as dream. This is a dream. The difference between this dream and the sleeping dream is that this dream seemingly has a continuity. As the dream is forgotten all about in the waking dream, the sleeping dream, so is the sleeping dream forgotten all about in the waking dream. So you can't say it was or it wasn't appeared to be, it seemed to be, and it's seemingly not there, but it's still constantly going on. <laughs> Can't get the signalling. <laughs> no. So, you were already that. That is all there is. Bring the, bring the clock over, Kat. Yeah. Thoughts, feeling and emotions are three aspects of the one thing. Mm. Just like steam, water and ice are three aspects of H2O. So different aspects can change. But we focus into it. When the water when the steam condenses a bit, cools down, it becomes liquid water. Mm. And that water, when it cools down a bit more, can come ice, become ice or snow. Mm. And it's still only ever the H2O, mm. or what it was before those two gases came together. Yeah. All in the space, pure energy. Mm. So the same with the thought, feeling, emotion. You realise, you don't realise it, but every problem you've ever had starts with a thought. All problems start with a thought. As Shakespeare told you, there's nothing either good or bad with thinking makes it so. Now the thought might be a very subtle, sad thought. You mightn't realise it's there because it would come up as you're driving past something and you bring up an old memory or you hear a tune on the radio or the computer, wherever it is, and remind you of some old thing. Or somebody will be saying something and remind you of something else. Something in the memory. And you bring that memory into the moment and fixate on it. And that brings up the sensation or the feeling. And that's all that feeling is, is a sensation. But we label the sensations. Unhappiness, depression, fear, guilt, remorse. Jealousy, envy. Or joy, happiness, which are sensations also. But we don't fixate on them and keep them there. And because we habitually focusing into the negative sensations that are, we are applying to the believed in separate entity, me. I'm unhappy, I'm fearful, I'm sad. It becomes a problem. Not I am the absolute, I am the joyousness. I am the love, I am the happiness. If that was recognised continually, it would be stick around just as much as the, as the habitual yeah. breaking up into the concepts of fear, anger, guilt, remorse. Keep reminding yourself, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Remind yourself that you are that one essence. That one essence is all there is. And you and I are that one. I'm not talking to any body. I'm not talking to any mind. I'm talking to that essence that I am. 
that expresses through the mind as the thought I am. Not to this, just to this and not to anything else. Yeah. Or I can't tell you anything. I can't teach you anything. All I can do is point to it and ask you to look, to see for yourself to what's being pointed to. Because this I, that the believed in entity, can't do anything. It is a thing. The same as what I'm talking to is a thing. Can one thing speak to another thing? Can't. So, what will hear it if the, the, I'm not speaking to anybody or not, not teaching you anything, can't tell you. What would hear it? There must be a resonation with it. Something innately, that innate life essence that you are, the intelligence of me, must recognize. And will tell you why. Oh, yes, I am that essence. I am that essence. That is really what I am. I'm not this body. I'm not this mind. I'm not this person. I'm not this individual. I am that. Innately we know that. Because naturally you'll say, that's the tree, that's the flower, that's the bird. That's the sofa you're sitting on or the chair. That's the room you're in. Everything is that. What's changed it? We put other discriminating words on it, we put labels on it with the language. And worst of all, we put the labels on this essence that we are, this intelligence entity. I am Bob, I am the Australian, I am a good fellow, I'm not so good. I've had a bad time, and a rough time in my life. The world doesn't treat me right, nobody loves me, I'm fearful. She loves you. Yeah. And we keep relating to that. Now, what's relationship? Mm. When you look into relationship, it's relativity. It's relative to. Mm. If it's a total, you can't relate to anything. But when you separate, you can relate to it. Oh, I don't like that. Or it's not what I am. It doesn't. It doesn't exist. Or it's fearful. It's good. Mm. All that comes about from relating. Relation. Relative. Relativity. But if it's non-dual, which means it's one without a second, and it's not even one, because one needs another or two. If you didn't have the count of one, could you say there was two? No. You couldn't. So that's why they put a one without the second. Mm. It's only and ever been that one. Who's the they yeah. that says it? The they is that one also that's not talking to anyone mm. or not speaking, tell, teaching anyone or telling one. It's that innate essence that resonates, that's recognised with this thing, with this conceptual imaging thing we call mind, which there's no thing else, such thing as mind. All the mind is is the capacity of thinking. That's a vibrating movement of energy vibrates into words or concepts which we've learned. And that's all that can ever divide it, is the word. Mm. And is the word the real? No. The word's not the thing. Take the word water, drink it if you can. Take the word fire, let it burn your mouth. It will. It won't. Take the word me or I. See what you can do with that word. Mm. I can, I will. I do, but really do, does that I persona do anything? No. We're just translating what the functioning intelligence is happening. Oh, but my, if it's not translating, it's, try, it's projecting what it should be doing. <laughs> what you thinking? Or what was, always moving away from the seeming presence of awareness, which can never happen. Mm. Because it's that which is appearing, a thing which is appearing in the presence of awareness, seems to make it change or move. Yeah. But it doesn't. It's always the stillness, the silence, the emptiness, which in the seeming vibration, which is spontaneous, 
has no beginning, no ending. It's just a shimmer, a span, or a throb, a pulsation that vibrates and is what they call in Hinduism Shiva Shakti. Shiva is the static aspect. Shiva is forming all these concepts and Shakti dances and makes them appear out of itself. And they depicted as two, but it's still only the one. Shiva Shakti is the one essence. Intelligence is the static. Energy vibrates, mm. forms the pattern. Shakti dances, vibrations. You are that. Be what you are. See for yourself. The false cannot stand up to investigation. True and false. What is true? Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's what it tells you. When you are recognizing or understanding or knowing that truth, what are you free from? You're free from all of the seeming division, all the conceptual imaging that's going on, that's keeping you in bondage, the you or the I. But can the essence of self ever be bound? There's no you or I, there's just isness. Can you bind isness? No. If you tied it up, it'd still be is. Mm. Because it's unaltered, unmodified, uncorrected. No preference, no partiality, no comparison. Where do all those, they're all concepts or thoughts. So am I the mind? Well, show it to me. Yeah. Show it to me. You're the foot, you can show me a thing called foot. If you believe in the foot, you can show me a thing called finger or a hair on your head <laughs> or a tooth in your head. Mm. But this thing you call my mind, which you've so, got such a vested interest in, such a firm belief in, you can't show it to me at all. <laughs> well, if you can't show it to me, maybe there's nothing there. You realise it's only a thought or a concept. Which we put the label, mind, on it. Mm. And what is mind? The thing we call mind, as I said, is concepts. What are concepts? Thoughts. Thought, what are thoughts? Words. Mm. What are words? Sound. What sounds? Vibration. What's vibration? A movement of energy. What's the energy? A seeming somewhat of a movement on the silence, on the stillness, on the emptiness. It's a cognizing emptiness. It's a knowing emptiness. And that the Buddha can tell us that the emptiness is doing the cognizing, but he said the emptiness is forming it all. It's all formed out of that cognizing or knowing emptiness. And he turned around the other way and said the form can be nothing but the emptiness. Mm. Emptiness is form, form is emptiness. So it's still the one, hasn't changed. It only appears to be so. Look in the mirror and see the images in the mirror. Yeah. The mirror is full of reflections or images. Reflections is an appearance in it and an image is appearance in it. Mm. Different, two different words pointing out the same thing. Like awareness and consciousness pointing out the same thing and God and enlightenment, there's still all that awareness. Yeah. Put different labels on it. Mm -hmm. And we discriminate with the words. But the, with that language, very useful, but the word discriminates. And the same word can be used in many, used, said in different ways. And we divide it up by taking the word to be real. The word to be thing. The thing. And the word thing is absolutely no thing. A vibration. So you see, no wonder we get locked into all these things which we believe to be real. And no wonder we suffer accordingly. We do not notice the simplicity of non-duality. And then they try and call it Neo-Advaita. 
I'm no, no John Deere invader, Neo invader. Oh, good, let them call it that. But how many invaders have they got? They've divided that up too, but Neo invader, and you invader. Mm. It's only the one, it's not even the one. And they still don't find it from there. Of course they won't. Because you're trying to find that which you already are. That was like the fella that had a solid stone block on, a, on his doorstep. Had it there for years from the time he could first remember it was there. And he was very poor and he was always bemoaning the fact of his being poor and unhappy and all the rest of it. One day he went out and sort of scraped it off and painted it. So he scraped all the mud and dirt off it and underneath was gold. It was a great lump of gold that he hadn't recognised. Mm. It had been there all the time. But he turned around and looked at it in a different way and took, uh, investigated in a different direction to see the reality of it. We're all conditioned to believe we are this person. Our parents conditioned us and their parents conditioned them. But there's been a few down through the ages that recognise it and pointed it out to a few, who have pointed it out to a few, and then there's been formed religions and these spiritual traditions out of it. And when some of them got out without realising it, they've put their own concepts on it and stuffed it up again. Mm. And told you, you've got to become this or acquire that. And then they've done that and go into all sorts of practices, all sorts of concepts, instead of recognising it, why, why I'm already that. Mm -hmm. I've always and ever been that. And the knowing there, the being, the knowing, and the loving to be is there. It's right there with me right now. Mm. Do I have to learn to love to be? Mm. Do I have to start knowing this or that? We might, when it comes to the intellect, we've got to say two and two is four, and eight and four is twelve and all that sort. But in the pure intelligence, what is the knowing? It's always expressing that sense of presence, I amness, mm. the intelligence, energy, being, the gate your beingness, say I am not. Mm. I can say I am not all day. But I, innately, I know that I am, mm. don't you? Mm. So what's the search all about? And I was stuck in it for years myself. And believed it. Yeah. And when somebody would try, try, try and point the stuff to me, that's a lot of crap. And of course I'd go back into it. Until it came, pointed it out in such a way that it couldn't be ignored anymore. Because that's all it is. Ignorance. Like they tell us in the scriptures. We ignore our true nature. We ignore the actuality and focus on the expression or the appearance. So quit the ignorance. And be in the knowing. What are you actually knowing right now? You're knowing that you are. You're knowing that you cannot negate that beingness. Mm. You're knowing that there's a, a loveliness in it, or a affectionateness in it, a warmth in it, a seemingly goodness in it. There is nothing wrong anymore, put it negatively. Mm. Everything is okay. Mm. And you're knowing, the knowing that when it vibrates in the opposite, there can be a sadness, an unhappiness, depression, a guilt, an instability and a fear and anger, all these things can come up. Because why? We've taken our, our focus off the true nature and focused into the erroneous belief in the words that we've learned. That the word is real. The word is some substance, an independent nature. Tells you that Hing Sing Ming, the 
right way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. Mm. When love and hate are both absent, everything is clear and undisguised. Clear and undisguised. It's there in its openness, in its splendor, in its beauty, in its naturalness. Make the smallest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. Yes. We talk about heaven as being paradise, a wonderful place, and the earth as being the hellhole that it is. And they're seemingly set apart, but have a look in nature. The earth's out there rolling around the emptiness of space right now. Mm -hmm. Is it separate from it? Nope. Can you take it out of space? Nope. They're not infinitely apart, they can't be. And it goes on to say, breaking it all down into ways that can be understood and seen through. Get to the end, the last verse it says, words. The way is beyond language. Putting out all these words to write the poem and what's in it and to think about it and what it's saying are all words. The way is beyond language. And language is words. For in it there's no yesterday, no tomorrow and no today. Just as it is. They're not broken up into these different words. Yesterday is a concept. Mm. No, tomorrow, tomorrow is a concept. And today is another concept. So these things are all concepts. Everything is that. And that's just a word too. Mm -hmm. So start from the fact. Start from that fact. You've looked long enough to try and find it or you wouldn't be here. Because when you got sick of looking at a lot of the other things, something moved you to look somewhere else. Yeah. You might have been somewhere someone for years doing all sorts of practice and everything. It might have been helpful in the beginning, but now something tells you, move a little bit further. And it moves you to look at something like this. And you might need to look a little bit further than this, what's been pointed out here. Yeah. If you do, it'll move you there. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you'll settle in and recognise. And it'll take you, which it has taken many, beyond the need for further help. As the Sargadatta put it, I can only express it negatively. I am beyond the need for further help. That means that there's no one that needs any help that is already that. It's only in the thatness that you can be beyond it all. Beyond it all means prior to it. Yeah. And what is prior to thought or the mind? what they call no mind. The seeming mind is there but there's no concepts going on. It's pure mind or no mind or clear and empty, cognizing mind. Still knowing but it's not conceptualizing it. So, got Kat there, she'll say a few words. She's quiet. And you're all a pretty good crowd that listen to that and you've all got some very good questions and some of you haven't got the questions anymore. Mm. You're giving us the understanding and that's there from you. And others might hear it. That's the way it's passed on. And if there's still any doubts, don't hesitate to ask them. Get them cleared up. Get them pointed to and whatever. And there'll be somebody there that will be able to give you a pointer that might re recognise. Where you go, love you all. Because I'm only loving that which is. Hello everyone. Yeah, Bob says Kat have something to say and I think Nicholas was commenting on during the talk that there is a Zen master here sitting and demonstrating the natural state. Cut the bullshit and get the other business. <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> <coughs> okay, I have a few comments from people. And nice ones too. 
Bob, you are so clear. I love you. That's from Barbara. And I think I'll be going from the past. What passes through, pass it on, Jane says. Don't ask mind to tell which is beyond the mind. Self. That's from Nisargadatta, from Amarnath. And Jane says, be warm and affectionate to the darkness. Yeah. Mm. You are the darkness as much as that's you are the light. Yeah, that darkness. Darkness. Darkness, oh yeah. 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 But it works either way because everything is one. So yeah. whatever word you call it is uh, another reflection of one. Uh, so now, Amarnath. Coming and going happens in appearance which is transient. Truth is eternal. Bob and us are created instantly and renewed instantly like dream yet we are all one essence yes. yes if you see it from that point of view where can you become from mm. and where can you go to <laughs> get cancelled under and actually got some static point and where it starts and then from <coughs> and barbara says i am and the heart and it was in the answer to uh, rocks saying quit the ignorance be the knowing beautiful mm. that was nicholas saying meow to the cat she's abandoned us she'll be back and rohan the one looking to acquire a mass or improve anything is a fiction thanks bob for hammering the point home again and again much love And now I'm going to be going through the screenshots. Uh, <laughs> Thierry Michael says, gotta go nowhere. Mm. <laughs> nowhere to go. Yeah, well, tell him to he put the nail on uh, here. Mm. No, take the nail off the, d the W off the nail and put it on the here. Read it then. Yeah, instead of nowhere would be no here. No, yeah. no here. Yes, okay. I'm just gonna go to the screenshots because I took a couple of pictures from uh, whatever was mentioned before, and that was oh beautiful. A comment and uh, suggestions from Barbara. Bob, would you say inspiration thought coming in? Yeah. And expiration, thought going out. Yes. Mm. Let the thought ride out on the breath. <coughs> when you inspire, you're breathing in. That's inspiration. And that brings the inspirations into the mind too. Because it shows it's not coming from the head. It's all the thought. You don't know what your next thought is going going to be. Mm -hmm. So it must be with the breath. It must come in with the breath. <coughs> but we fixate on it and keep it there instead of letting it go out with the breath. <coughs> and then the thinking is ever fresh and ever new. It's coming from the the awareness, the space-like intelligence energy. It's coming from the pure intelligence that is the very life of you. <coughs> and that same breath that comes into you, if you weren't breathing, how long would that life last? Mm -hmm. So it comes in just the same as the life was coming into that when you were a little embryo through the cord of your mother. Yeah. There was no breath coming in, but it was coming through the, mm. the umbilical cord of your mother. When that was cut, you took your first breath and had to go on from there on your own. <coughs> Seemingly. Yes. Yes, so this is from Tanya. Thank you for reminders that I am already that, that one essence and the heart. Immense great, immensely grateful for this meeting, satsang. And uh, Julia replying for that, um, I concur. Bob changed the game by ending it and clearly pointing out that it never ever happened in reality. Words cannot describe my love and gratitude. That's a beautiful way of experiencing and expressing love. Gratitude and appreciation and beauty yeah. and even acknowledge, acknowledgement of that beauty and that goodness and that sweetness is yeah. it is the juice that actually fuels your own heart it mm. feels your own and that's it 
word acknowledge. Acknowledge him in all thy ways mm. and he will direct thy path. Acknowledge that essence that you are, that life, mm. and that'll direct you. That's right. Yeah, and uh, Tanya says, yes, it's great that Bob points to here uh, to there is no time and that the label thought is not the actual. Without fixating on the story, more clarity appears. How beautiful you express gratitude, Julia. Someone, someone wants to join, can I join? Uh, no, this was a suggestion for me. Uh -huh. Because I'm taking screenshots from... Okay. Yeah, it's not... not uh, whoever wants to join is free, it's open, it's not restricted. Uh -huh. And Claudia is with us. Welcome, Claudia, you made it. Is she? Yes. Good. Yes. And I think I had one more. I had one here. Yes. And that was from Tanya, the, uh, the beginning one. Good morning, Bob and Kat and everyone. I'm noticing a lot of concepts not own or belonging to anyone. A lot of concepts not yeah. owned. How wonderful. Yeah. You can see concepts as just passing clouds mm. without taking any ownership. And that happens the same with the concepts that flow through your narrative self yeah. as much as any other people. So if you see people who have different opinions, different judgments, they disagree, they're ready to fight or defend their opinions, you know that the concepts that possess them are not their concepts. They don't belong to anyone. And what a freedom in that. Let's see if there is anything fresh appearing. Mm. Yeah, this one is not refreshing very well. This one. Yes. Uh, JK, the isness is seen. However, there is compassion to assist seeming others to recognize the isness too. Can you comment, please? Thank you. What? Uh, the need to share the message, I'd say, to save the world, to help, help other people. There is an isness. However, there is a compassion to assist seeming others to recognize the isness too. Yes. Can you comment? Well, isn't that spontaneously coming up? You feel like you got a shout from the housetops. I tried that, but not everybody would listen. But, <laughs> <laughs> but just in the uh, recognizing it yourself, mm. others will rec recognize it in them, in you, and come to you. They'll recognize the change in you, and want to know what you've got. Like it happened there. Come and hear and listen to you. And then you'll open your mouth and that'll come. People used to oh, oh, they used to be going around in the old spiritual circles. Oh, my guru told me to speak. My guru told me to do that. And when I came back from India, the people said, did I got to tell you to speak? And I said, no, he didn't tell me to speak. And if he would told me not to speak, he couldn't have stopped it. <laughs> That's how strong it comes out. Yeah. You can't help yourself. <coughs> And, and you see others now in the, in the question is not the, 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 the what do you call them tweets or that are going on and that coming through there's people that are recognizing it mm -hmm. and people will read that and it might register resonate with somebody they will come along to you and ask you what to know more let it happen Yes, th they are ideas, like idea of being a bodhisattva and re relinquishing your own awakening in order to help others because that opens your heart, that brings up the compassion, the empathy, and all those ideas are really beautiful. But again, they just like Tanya was saying, they're floating concepts belonging to no one. See what life moves you to do. Sometimes you may be in the presence of someone who is suffering, and you may just hold space for them to see their own way uh, to find their own answers rather than feed them with yours. 
And sometimes you may be moved to preach it from the rooftops. As long as you don't really have the prescription of what Good should stuff. you do, because every prescription like that will assure that there is a you, and there is a task, and there is a division. <laughs> really, life is so spontaneous. At times you may find yourself being completely at service, but not in a way of sharing a, me a message, but in a way of helping them to organize the house. Or yeah. Clean the rubbish. Or, yes, the, the most effective ways is what I found, is to hear what people have already recognized. Because everyone knows that innately. We really are one. And also the miracles that uh, I've been sharing with a couple of friends, the situations that we had uh, in which uh, some energetic work needed to be done or whatever, or the... Mm, certain things needed to be expressed but they did they couldn't be expressed in open because of the hostility and letters has been written and they have been sent and they never arrived to a place but they changed the energy because it is really one field sometimes really just like Bob says working with your own channel clears up that energy and it changes the whole world it changes your perception of the world and that's the whole world suddenly you start projecting people who suffer they're also people who are that who are awake already and you may start projecting that they all innately know it and you may see how it is true rather than trying to fix them outside them which I by no means say you're trying to do now it's, uh, it is a love and compassion that that kind of shines through your question and it's beautiful Amarnath very interesting, once Nisargadatta Maharaj was asked once where you feel self max. It is the heart, he said. No, I feel throughout the body, same just like electricity field and beyond the body mind too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to read without any punctuation. Okay, let's, I'll, I'll try again. Very interesting, once Nisargadatta Maharaj was asked once where you feel self max is it hard I would imagine there would be a question mark he said no I feel throughout the body same just like electricity field and beyond the body mind too yeah well again I get that uh, come back to words when they got that word heart <coughs> Most people think they're talking about the physical heart when it says heartfelt. But it seems the heart is the core of everything, the center of the spirit or the core of being. So that core of being is suffusing that pattern constantly. And sometimes it might feel like a knot in the guts, an ache in the, around the heart area or a lump in the throat or something in the head. But when you look from you can't find any point there because it's all energy fusing the whole body. Yeah. Then we have another one. Mm, sorry. Gosh. Just wouldn't go. Hmm? No, I'll read it on the phone. <coughs> Barbara says, when I don't defend, the body becomes transparent. Yeah. Mm. And gosh. Okay, it's refreshed now. Mm. No. Amarnath, uh, dear Bob, your experience on deep sleep. We are never asleep as we are all aware of our sleep too. Till we do self-inquiry, we say I sleep, but I never slept or wakes.
Yeah. Yes, is it? And you sleep. You know, <laughs> people say, oh, "I was unaware," but you're not. You, the I or you, is unaware. But there is awareness <laughs> of your unawareness because there's nothing that can appear outside or apart from awareness. Yes, and so also that awareness is prior to what we call the waking state or the sleep state. Mm. Yeah, the I never slept or wakes. Yes, again, depends on the definition. If the I is the uh, is the unlimited field of open awareness, yes, it never sleeps, wakes, it never gets born or dies, or yeah. it, it just doesn't. It you can't even say it exists because it equally exists and doesn't exist. And that's the pure I without any concepts of it. That's right. But if you call I the identification or <coughs> the sense of presence localized then of course it is a phantom. It may seem to be going, coming, and uh, but it doesn't. So we are all aware of our sleep too. Uh, yeah. This is, yeah, we can say it, but uh, that's again, you could pick on the word we because th it is just the one field. Mm. There is no we in it. Uh, but yeah, you use the language. Amarnath. Beautiful uh, cut. For this suffering also we see same self. Yeah, it's only one, just one. Rohan, Bob, when you were moved to share the message, was there ever a frustration at others not recognizing it? Or just a clear knowing that recognition and non-recognition are just two ends of the same stick? Yeah. Um, they were, they when people weren't hearing, mm. naturally, and people not only not hearing but telling you to shut up, you know, <laughs> naturally, you got you learn not to open your mouth until others ask recognise you. something and ask me. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing <laughs> how life was. So if you try, try yeah. to get someone, you can. Hammer away at them, and they're not going to get anywhere at all. All they do is cause frustration. True. But who's who's seeing others anyway? <laughs> but knowing there are no others, mm. and they'll either be hearing or not hearing. Yes. <coughs> yes, I remember that. Uh, I think it was four or five years ago. Just out of curiosity, I did that compatibility test of 30 questions that uh, we were both answering, Bob and I. And uh, out of 30 questions, we answered 29 just the same way. But there was one question that we answered differently. And the question was roughly about how much do you care whether people hear what you say? And I still had an investment. I did believe at that point that when I communicate something, I do care to be received, whatever I'm communicating. I do actually like that reflection. It was more to go in the relationship between the couple. But I did have that investment and Bob didn't. And that was so inspiring to figure out. He says, well, whatever comes out of my mind is not mine anymore. But life does it, whatever it does it mm. with it, whether you hear it or whether others hear it, it's none of my business. Yes. If people are not hearing it, that's, yeah. that's not their doing. That's the way it is in the moment. That's right. <coughs> yeah, but that was, let's say, five years ago when I still had that sort of a lingering pattern of, uh, of having a preference towards being received or, not, or, or heard the way I wanted to communicate, especially in a romantic relationship. But he didn't, and uh, it inspired me so much. I was actually sitting in it and searching through my own heart and my own experience and finding a place in which I totally resonate and I totally relate to the perspective that Bob was expressing. And today, if we would do the same test, we would go both 30 out of 30, which is quite remarkable. <laughs> but yeah, they all the, the, the end, the, uh, like, yeah, you put it nicely, Rohan, uh, a clear knowing that recognition and non-recognition are just two ends of the one stick. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Everything is perfect and resolved in the unborn mind. Yeah. And also Bob says it quite often, whether you recognize it or not, there's nothing you can do about the fact that you are already that anyway. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
whether you're dreaming to be a, a, an actor playing a role, wearing a costume, or that dream is not there, or that dream is seen through, the fact is still that you are that aliveness, that, that manifesting essence that is moving the whole world, that is moving the thinking, the feeling, that... Uh, and uh, Martin, what does Bob think about the Seth material? Think about what? Seth material. S E T H material. Do you know what Seth material? No. Yeah, I'm not quite sure either, sorry. And uh, Sandeep is asking Bob, do you get angry these days? Yep. Yeah, why not? Why not? Well, recall anger, another sensation, mm. putting the old label on it. It stirs up the body. Mm. It's become the emotion. It doesn't last long because it's pointless. Yeah, and it's not really a very fiery sort of a fury type of an anger. It's more kind of a irritability that comes when the pain is persistent or when there is a, 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 a problem with hearing or, or a little bit of a pressure. Yeah, it comes up. And that's perfectly normal. First of all, realizing that there is no self, that there is no one in charge uh, running the show does not really deprive you from anything apart from self-referencing and psychological suffering. And anger is not a suffering at all. Anger is a quite a beautiful, powerful vibration. And if you look at the nature, if you look at the angry birds or angry dogs, they do experience that frequency of the energy. They don't have a story about it. And I don't believe Bob have much of a story about it either, because when I see that coming up, it doesn't last. It just stays as long as the physical component uh, or chemical component in the body keeps it up and then it dissipates and that's that's the way to actually um, to live in uh, as in nature to be in the natural state yeah yeah well they shouldn't all the feelings and sensations be there they should yeah that's part of life itself yeah but to fixate on them or to lock into them mm. the different matter where they cause the emotional upsets and stirring that carries on when it's already passed. Yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, Sandeep. Thank you. Does that mean that we can give vent to anger? It means that you have no choice. Well, uh, <laughs> can you can you stop it when it comes up? That's right. Yeah, yeah. We can we can actually fool ourselves that we ha we are in charge and we can control. We can control whether we will express it or we won't express it. But the truth is, whether that control happens or not, depends on thought. If the strong thought comes, I have to suppress it, then the anger will be suppressed. But did you think that thought or the thought just came up in your mind? Because if the thought just came up in your mind, you did not have a choice whether it will show up or not. So there will be times when the anger will be expressed. There will be time when it will be suppressed. And there will be a time when perhaps the anger will be just experienced and explored. Perhaps you will just stay with that bubbling life. And it is not up to you. It is up to life whether that thought, mm. and that, action thought. And that the, the usual habit pattern is we, re, we react to something. Mm. And react can bring up the fear, the anger. And instead of reacting, re the natural response, let the response be there and start reacting to something. That's what sp spontaneously comes up. Yeah. And it might be a diff totally different thing altogether. Mm. And Louise. Uh, hi, Bob and Kat. Could you say a word about the purpose of meditation? For I am that. In discussion regarding yoga and boga, Nisargadatta Maharaj said, weak desire can be removed by meditation, uh, but strong, deep-rooted ones must be fulfilled 
and their fruits sweet or bitter tasted. Um. Their fruits, a strong, weak desire can yeah. be removed in meditation, but the strong one yeah. will, will just fulfill itself, will just move the body. Mm. Yeah. Yes, in sport, yes. Yeah, so mm. yeah. But so can you say something about the purpose of meditation then? That was the question. Well, meditation, who's, who's meditating? When you look at meditation, mm. there's the natural meditation when there's no one to meditate and nothing, and nothing to, to meditate. meditate on. But when I'm trying to meditate, uh, there is a desire to meditate. You know? Yes. That's... Leave it be spontaneously what it is, you know. Yes, and I would also add that uh, according to Volinsky, because I didn't meet Mr. Gadata, Bob did, but uh, we watched some doco in which uh, Stephen Volinsky, who is also a friend of Bob's, he explained uh, the motivation behind Mr. Gadata's pointing, which seems to be contradictory, self-contradictory in many cases where sometimes he would tell people to meditate, sometimes he would tell people to drop it, sometimes he would tell people they were not the body, sometimes he would tell them that they were the body as well. And uh, according to Stephen, this was in the response of particular way of the particular student's, student's stuckness. If they got stuck in something, like in this case perhaps it was a desire, struggling with the desire or investigating the desire, then Nisargadatta could suggest that, that, yeah, sure, you know, if the energy of that thought is not very strong, you could probably just breathe through it and it will just dissipate because it's not charged enough to take the action to move you. But if it becomes an obsession, well, it's probably, it's probably just going to take its course because that energy that fuels that desire is the, is the very life. Every, every energy is that, is that life. So it doesn't mean that meditation is a must. It, it may be just sitting in silence and being aware of what's energetically happening in that mm. thought or desire. Or it may be a formal practice for one who is moved to do that. But as long as you don't take credit for any sort of formal practice and you, practice and you don't take hopes that this will take you to some future where you will achieve something because there is no you, there is no future, and there is nothing to achieve. Mm. And if meditation, if, uh, well, we were talking with a uh, couple of friends last Wednesday about the meditation also, how beautiful side effects meditation brings to, to life if it's not, if it's not uh, that self-sabotage uh, by setting a story. It actually brings the attention back to the body, which is a healing energy again. It stills the moving action center. It brings balance. It improves concentration, focus, it's got a lot of byproducts. But it is not a means or tool to take imagined self into imagined enlightenment. That is not. See, what, what we're pointing to here is this idea of a personal self as a fiction. Yes. But then, if I think I've got to meditate, how does that help get rid of the fiction? That's right. Well, it's a me. Mm. Just trying to get somewhere and become something. Without trying, let whatever spontaneously comes up, and you'll naturally fall into silence or stillness on a lot of occasions. Without trying, if, it's, uh, if that's the way life moves you. Yes. And there is uh, DK Martin. Maybe I can chat with Bob about it very well know channeled info from an apparent entity that graduated from this earthly illusion on one hand has a non-dualistic message we are not the body mind ego etc and then goes into great lengths to explain how and why of this illusion and existence mm. Yeah, there is someone who is uh, having a dualistic message on one hand and on the other hand a lengthy explanation as if he or she knew something. Uh, yeah, sometimes this is how life expresses. This is, uh, I think a lot of uh, speakers still have lingering cultural beliefs and concepts. That includes Bob and myself 
uh, that are deep rooted into the whole conditioned world, you know, the collective beliefs. We all see the solid objects and we all tend to have helpful uh, ideas to settle the mind down. Sometimes explaining things, uh, like, you know, the best explanation uh, or, or uh, advice I ever heard is the answer is not in the mind, stop looking there. But sometimes giving a mind an answer creates that sort of a shift, that mind, okay, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I got it, okay, I put it out of the way. Now we're going to focus on something new. Who knows why life moves people to behave and do and express the way they do. And it doesn't mean that someone is clear or someone is not clear, because there's no one to be clear or unclear. There's nothing there. It's just pouring life. And sometimes that pouring life uses thicker filter of beliefs, and sometimes thinner filter, and sometimes no filter, and then the silence only comes. Mm. But by all means, email Bob and catch up on Skype and have a chat. Tell him who is it, what is it. You can have a nice conversation. Uh, the email is on his website, silorbobadamson.com. Just, yeah, get in touch. We'll give you the Skype and it uh, can be fun. Mm, Sandeep says thank you. And Amarnath, self is experienced a lot when anger comes and goes as spontane spontaneity appear and disappear. Villain and hero are fighting, but screen of consciousness origin does not get affected. There is no distress, but joy after that. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, the screen's never contaminated or corrupted by anything that appears. That's right. Beautiful. Never. Mm. <coughs> uh, Tanya. Have you heard on the Buddhist 10 fetters model? Fetters 5 and 6, desire and ill will, if broken, means you won't react. It seems to imply anger should not arise, and if it does, it means you are not awakened. Whatever that is, laughing out loud, what is your take on this? Well... Uh, no, hang, how old is still so I can read it? I just read it. Want me to read it again? Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna Have you heard on the Buddhist ten fetters model? No, I haven't. No. Okay. Fetter five and six, desire and ill will, if broken, means you won't react. It seems to imply anger should not arise. If it does, it means you are not awakened. Whatever it is, laughing out loud. What's yeah. your take on this? Well, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not awakened, all those things are going to happen. What if you recognise your true nature? Who is it going to happen to? Who needs ten feathers or a million feathers? Yeah. It's only that. Yeah, I think... They, put a, they make up all sorts of different things, you know. Mm. This is uh, also what uh, uh, D.K. Martin was saying, that there are people who... Uh, seem to transmit a quite a clear message and then they go into a lengthy explanation about fetters, about uh, eightfold paths and about doing this and understanding this and going there and moving that and there's a lot of the worship there involved and we have to remember that big organized schools or religions <coughs> besides transmitting the message they also had another function and that was a function regulating a society and anger is antisocial, let's call it this way. It is undesirable socially. So in the society, you, de you do teach your children to suppress anger. That's what uh, uh, helps the community to, or society to, to uh, be seemingly more healthy. That's how life has it anyway. But yes, uh, a lot of theory, a lot of thinking, a lot of conceptualizing in the formalized schools. Take and it lightly. And it goes forever if we try to work it out in the mind. The and thoughts go on and on yes. and on. And uh, we both, Bob and I, met quite a few scholars, a Buddhist scholars, or uh, Christian Nan was coming here as well, wasn't she, Barbara? 
and a lot of people with a lot of education and a lot of study behind them and the more than pack their pack their minds with the concepts of what to do and how to do the more differentiations and ideas there the harder to get out of this mind the harder to see that this is all just noise while the natural state in which that noise appears and disappears is unobscured all of the time Yeah, so uh, Bob, you're not awakened according to Buddhists because you sometimes experience irritability. But Buddhists says dogs have Buddha nature and dogs experience irritability. I bet you. you know, okay. <laughs> Pull their tail too many times and you will see. So they contradict themselves if, that, if that's the case. And <laughs> there's no concern here about what... I know, I know, I'm just kidding. Uh, Awareness of an awareness equals sleep. Thank you, Bob, for this. Though we can't define. Hmm. Awareness of an awareness equals sleep. Thank you, Bob, for <laughs> this. How could you say you slept well? <laughs> what tells you you slept well? Mm. Yes. Uh, Barbara, anger is a biological reaction. Normal arising in the moment, vertical. Suffering is when it extended into time, horizontal. Yeah, well said. Mm. Yeah. And now? Uh, Tanya responding to what Barbara just said about anger. Thank you, Barbara. I see anger as normal biological arising also. Thanks for the reminder that suffering is when it is extended into time. Mm. It will pass. No need to cling or resist it. That's right. Don't cling to anything. Mm. And Rohan. Ajahn uh, Hach, a woman wanted to know how to deal with anger. I asked when anger arose, whose anger it was. She said it was hers. Well, if it really was her anger, then she should be able to tell it to go. Uh, mm, sorry for that. Okay. Uh, she should be able to tell it to go away, shouldn't she? But it really isn't hers to command. Holding on to anger as a personal possession will cause suffering. If anger really belonged to us, it would have to obey us. If it doesn't obey us, that means it, on, it is only a deception. Don't fall for it. Whenever the mind is happy or sad, don't fall for it. It is all a deception. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, whatever the mind is, whether it is a clear mind or it's a confused mind or it's a trained mind or it's a meditative mind or whatever the mind is, the truth is beyond the mind. To see beyond that good mind, bad mind, happy mind, sad mind, is, uh, is the way. Like Bob said, way is beyond language. Mind is language. Mind is thinking. Nisargadatta says, Amarnath, scriptures and religions are only for beginners. Mind can't test the self, as self is not an experience. That's from Nisargadatta. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the, the clarity is when the mind is not. So the mind trying to taste that clarity is the obscuration trying to taste the clarity. Claudia, hi Bob, can you talk about the process of not identifying with the mind? Yeah. Well, keep inquiring. Mm. If you're saying it's my mind, try and find it. Show me this thing you call mind. Ask yourself, what is this mind? Can I find it? Can I find a centre to it? Can I find a circumference? These thoughts are coming up in what we call mind. But what's the mind? Is it something substantial with a centre or a circumference? Or well, it's just a few vibrating pattern of energy which vibrates the thought, thought patterns, feelings and emotions. Mm. Concepts. 
energy. Yes. Nothing near substantial or solid as you can say, this is mine. Mm. We put the label, my mind, on it, who's claiming it? Yeah. Must be the conceptual image that I have about myself. Mm. The image made up of concepts. Can that c claim anything? Has it got any power? Can it stand outside of life itself? No. Well, nothing can stand outside of life. Mm. How can you call it mind or mine or even body or, yeah. or awareness at all without life? Yet it is the same life that's patterning, shaping, forming, expressing as everything. Tells you in the Gita the sword can't gut it, fire can't burn it, the wind can't dry it, the water can't drown it. Mm. We'll have a look at all those things. Can, can the water wet itself? Can the fire burn itself? Mm. Can, what is that? Wind sword, dry sword itself. Sword cut itself. Yeah. Yeah. It can't. So all this thing we're saying is some power can't do any of these things. Mm. But they all appear, vibrate into patterns, shapes and forms and disappear. But they have no substance, independent nature of themselves though. Because they're yeah. not separate. Mm. It's all the one. I think the nice uh, aspect of the, uh, Claudia, you call it process of not identifying with the mind is to recognize every time when it is already so. Because when you actually see the mind, when you see the thinking, when you are aware of that stream of, uh, of vibrational energy or pattern or images or words or sounds, whatever, whichever way you actually are aware of the narrative or the, or the thinking process, you're already seeing it from the stillness. The movement is only known through stillness. Yeah. So whenever you recognize the mind as something that is showing up in the awareness, that is already, uh, the identification is already broken. And that is the moment to celebrate. That is the moment to actually, ah, that's the awakening. Ah, oh, beautiful. That's cool. That's, that's something to be acknowledged. And it, it always works in a way of recognition what is already so. Because when the identification is complete, the thought doesn't even arise to, to inquire. There's no problem. There is no division. There's only singularity of that expression through the, through the role or through the acting or the costume or the mask. But whenever the possibility is there to actually see the non-identification, non to recognize the mind as a stream of patterning, that's something to acknowledge and celebrate and appreciate and love. And Tanya, uh, thank you. Yes to many ideas, concepts in some Buddhist teachings. That is why interest in them fell away quite a while ago now. Whatever appears is just what is. Doesn't mean anything about being awakened or un un unawakened. Yeah, absolutely. Even the idea of someone there being awakened and awakened, how misguiding is that? There's no one there. But you may read through the old scriptures that used to, used to inspire you, and you may find that they were still attempting to show you beyond the mind. It just is such a difficult, such an impossible task to speak about unspeakable, that language, yeah, it's not that they were wrong or they didn't understand, it's just the way in which they try, and equally us, we try to explain unexplainable. It's, it's, it's an impossible task. If you don't resonate with that underlying energy that carry the words, and words are always dualistic, they're always false. And Nicholas, we want to be alive, but we all love death sleep. In that, is that mean something? <laughs> That's a cool observation. I like that. We all like to be alive, you know, mm. vibrant and high on energy, but we all lo love to sleep, like almost like being dead. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So, so we give it up every night. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, and the sleep is a recharge. You yeah. kind of, you know, fall into the source of non-existence or the uh, no I, no identification, and the body gets rejuvenated. All of it. Yeah, it's uh, Rohan. That quote was from Buddhist master Ajahn Hach. So obviously not suggesting that anger needs to go away. Yeah, I actually read that guy when I was a teenager. It was a beautiful, beautiful writing. A Buddhist master. Yeah, I guess uh, there is plenty of teachings. The one that Rohan was quoting about the anger, uh, not belonging to the woman who was angry, but mm. just, uh, just showing up. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. Not all the Buddhist teachings are using, uh, or Buddhist scholars, or Buddhist masters are using the same language of pointing. And they're pointing to so-called different levels. Mm. Yeah. So-called, if somebody's new, they probably couldn't give them the outright teaching straight away. True, yes, yes, they kind of... Mm, formalized school have some sorts of uh, processes, evaluation steps and things. And that's not right or wrong, that's what it is, that's how life is it. And there are people who are attracted to that type of structure and it supports them. And there are also those who are misguided by, by that type of structure. And on us being live, you, you both of them, you all of them. In one body, the realization is clear and obvious. In, an, in another, there is a different experiencing happening. But ultimately, everything is that. Jane, uh, we are the elements. Sometimes it is a, f a sunny day, sometimes a rainy day. Sometimes there is thunder and lightning. None of these are concrete. They come and go. Yeah, <coughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I love to view the, the changing moods as the changing weather. It really is like this even changing thoughts as the changing sounds outside. It really is uh, holographic as the universe in which, you know, it reflects in itself the same um, pointer can be applied in many different ways. And uh, now uh, Tanya answering to her own comment on ten feathers. Yes, no need to go by any religion or scriptures. Look at actual experience which as Bob says is not in the mind, not in thought. Only a thought story says there is a separate I that is angry, sad, happy, etc. Mm. Yeah, you're right. I, ultimately, you could even say, Bob, do you experience anger? What is anger? Define anger. Do I experience the label? No. But the energy? All sorts of energies are, are experienced in the body. But the lab label is already a conceptual evaluation mm. coming from comparing with the past. Whatever I was taught as a child, that this sort of a behavior and shaking hands and yelling is called anger. So now I'm loading myself with past experiences, labeling it out of the memory. Mm. But any energy, fresh and new, is not anger, sadness or anything. It's just what, it, what is, is what appears. Now, uh, GK commenting on that 10 feathers. I think Kat and Bob maybe answered this when a few minutes ago Bob mentioned the difference between reacting and responding. But that's a good point also. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that you have answered that uh, anger issue uh, when you explain the difference between reacting and responding. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's a different center from which it comes, the reaction and the response. Reaction is uh, mechanical and response is, is conscious in a way. And um, GK also says, question, Bob and Kat, can you please say more about the difference between responding and reacting? Thank you. Well. Somebody calls you a nasty name and what it is, it's affected the meaning or affected you and you've taken it on board and a natural response. I don't like to be called that or whatever it is and you'll react to it. Mm. And reacting that'll come from whatever the sensation is felt and the yeah. 
that the natural response is just what happens naturally. Like sometimes you might be sitting at a table and knock a spoon or a pen or something off it, mm. and before you know it, you've caught it before it's hit the floor. Uh -huh. That's a natural response. Mm. You didn't know, you know, you had no intention of doing anything about it, but the response came about. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I think that was a nice explanation. I don't remember where did it come from, but there was an explanation giving an example of a, a mother getting a little bit pissed off with the child, with the baby, or with a three-year-old throwing tantrum, and the reaction would be just yelling back, coming straight from that instinct and severing that relationship with the child. But response, being a little bit more aware and conscious about what's going on in the body, in the response, she would close her eyes for just 10 seconds or 5 seconds and acknowledge that buzzing life, acknowledge that fire coming, fire of fury, feel it, let it be there. And as this energy got completely absorbed and lived through and not rejected and not reacted from, it changes. And from there, the response would be much more compassionate and mu much more mm, inclusive and it would not severe the re relationship with the child. It's, it really is the uh, reaction and response. It really is the matter of how will you want to define the words because then we can go back to the animals and we say do they react or do they respond? Well. We response, have to agree on something. Response is spontaneous. Mm -hmm. Reaction comes from some taking some concept or thing or mm. somebody does something to you. Yeah. You react to it. Yeah, we just have to agree on terms because mm. we could equally agree on the on a different terms. But there is you could distinguish that there is a pointer in it. Because ultimately, of course, everything's one. The, the, any differentiation is used only to make it clearer or to help point out some aspect of the other. But really, it is all just one energy. And Claudia says, thank you, that is very clear. Hmm, beautiful. And Alvaro says, beautiful. Kat, thank you. And Amanath, uh, you are Buddha now. No need of Buddhists of sutras of, of sutras now. Everyone is Buddha, but we are dreaming as personalities. That comes from Papaji. And D. Many suggest that Nisargadatta was often angry, but isn't it likely far more accurate to say that he appeared to be angry, was or was firm or robust in expression? Yeah. I, I saw him over a period of 12 months, I never saw him angry. No, but you saw him passionate. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he come, come, get intense with his responses, but he was never, you couldn't help but love the man. He was that good. Mm. They call him an angry man, but they'd, he'd wave his arms about and raise his voice a bit, but in his intensity, but he was never angry about it. Yeah. Who, who was there for him to get angry at? That's right. <laughs> now, uh, when there is responding, that's Jane, it is spontaneous, mm. in the moment. When there is reacting, it is from the reactor, the image we have about ourselves, who has a story about the other person, place, or thing. That's a good answer. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's well done. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's cool. I read it again. When there is a responding, it is spontaneous in the moment. When there is reacting, it is from the reactor, the image we have about ourselves who has a story about the other person, place, or thing. Yeah, cool. That would actually... Uh, answer all of it. I mean, this is a good agreement to, 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 to use it this way. And Tanya, yes, maybe I interpreted the teachings incorrectly. Well, yeah, when the interpretation happens, that's already mind very involved in trying to grasp it and understand it. 
the teachings are supposed to move you, move your heart into the no mind space. If they don't do it, then interpretation or you know discussing about how many angels you can fit on the top of the needle that's just pointless that's just well pointless it's, it's entertaining it's, it's fascinating for the intellect it's, uh, it's yummy but it doesn't really doesn't really do the job <laughs> it is not what, it, what the teaching is intended for Amanath the true that's why Yes, true, that's why many realized in his presence because of his seriousness, not angriness. In fact, it was full of shower of love and grace. Yeah, I guess that's about Nisargadatta, yes. Mm. That Nisargadatta was angry. No, he wasn't. He was, yeah, many realized in his presence. Because, not, yeah, because of his seriousness seriousness yeah that's the passion yeah i'd say yeah mm. tanya yes thank you for so clearly expressing something i have wondered about i resonate with this so much it is easily seen that there is no reactor with a little investigation <laughs> beautiful and What time is it? Gosh, are we over time by 10 yep, minutes? Yep. Claudia says she's going. Thank you, Claudia. Yeah, we are going too. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that late. I'll just read the last uh, uh, from Julia. Isn't the reacting from an imagined reactor spontaneous as well? Absolutely. Everything is that same life. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, everything is totally, you know, if the filter of interpreting by the separate self is there, that filter is not yours it is life that put it there there is no one who is ever guilty of anything that is spontaneous and yet you see the validity of pointer i'm pretty sure you do thank um, you everyone yeah reaction equals memory conditioning is an action mm, thank you thank you bob and kat enjoy the rest of your sunday and so do you rohan and everyone thank you so much clarity expressed as always lots of love to the i am that i am nice to See, anger, emotions don't mean anything other than sensations appearing and responding naturally arises. So much peace noticed. Peace always is, no matter what appearance. I'm not affected by anything. And thank you, 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 everyone. And yes, have a beautiful Sunday or Saturday night, if uh, whatever the time it is for you. And yeah. Thank you for keeping Thank us you engaged all. till the overtime. Lo <laughs> love to all. Love to all. Love to the one. Love to the one in all. And that is you. Yes.